All alone on my anniversary. All my friends and family are here. Everybody except my husband. I'm not even sure if he's coming. Not tonight. Not tomorrow. Not ever. And I think that I found that in you. In you. And that was so precious, so true. All is left is to say hey, I do. I do. I think it might finally be over. Yes, love is a powerful thing. Tonight's fight might just have been the final nail in the coffin we've been building for so many years. For so many years. It is the reason I sing. Want to know how I ended up at my 20th anniversary gala event looking like a supermodel with no date on my arm? I'll tell you how. My day started like most. hasn't decided what to wear, so don't even bother coming in here. Alright then, it better be good. So I guess you're wondering why I'm at this seedy bar instead of at home getting dressed for my 20th wedding anniversary party. A uh, gala event that my wife is throwing in honor of our 20 years of wedded bliss. I'll tell you what I'm doing there. I'm here because this is where I'd rather be. Or better yet, this is the safest place for me right now. You see, I did something stupid last week. And sometimes it just takes one mistake to add to a lifetime of other mistakes and BAM! It all comes down on you. To tell you the truth, I was drunk. But getting drunk was not the dumbest thing that I've ever done. <laughs> oh no. On the contrary, working my butt off to give my wife a life of luxury she couldn't appreciate. Now that is the stupidest thing I've ever done. <laughs> Mr. Dennis, 
Is this shipment going to be ready to leave today? Yes, boss. Today could have been just like any other day. <laughs> if I had only ignored her phone call like I've done so many times before. June, you know I can't come home right now. I still have a ton load of work to do before I can leave. Don't want to hear it, James. Today's our anniversary, and our friends are coming from all over the place, you know. I know it's our anniversary, but what does that have to do with anything? I still have a lot of work to do here before I can leave. What do you mean by that, hmm? Tonight is our big anniversary, and mom and dad are coming all the way from Montego Bay. They should be here any minute now. Besides, I don't understand. Aren't you the boss? You should be able to delegate some of the responsibilities to others. I don't even know why you had to go to that factory in the first place. You should be at home helping me. Helping you to do what? Isn't that why you booked the most prestigious place in the island to keep your party? What help do you need? I'm going to pretend I did not hear that. Whatever works for you, my dear. You don't seem to realize that life goes on after all this is over. Anniversary or no anniversary, the bills will still have to be paid. And God knows you and the girls would have racked up enough to keep me busy for a long time. Oh, so you plan to stay there all day? Hmm? You promised you'd pick up the talks from the store yesterday, you know. I offered, but as usual, you said you'd do it yourself, just like everything else. Well, if you don't reach there in time, you won't have a catch for you. Yeah, yeah, I'll get the talks and I'll be home in time for your big bashment. My bashment? Eh? This is our anniversary, James. Mr. Mongrel, the dry cleaner's call to remind you to pick up your tux for tonight. Yeah, yeah, I'll get it. Why do I get the feeling that I'm the only one involved in this, eh? Well, in a way, you are. I wasn't in on this whole anniversary planning thing from the beginning. I would have been fine with a quiet dinner in a nice restaurant, but no. You have to show off to all your friends and have a big bash with. Again, I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. Cocktails start at 5, James, and I need your home by 3 o'clock the latest. And don't bother come up with any cock and bull story about how you're going to be late like you did last Friday night. After your so-called office party. I'll get home when I get home. I have work to do. You get home when you get home, no? <laughs> like you did last Friday night? June, let's not start that again, please. Now, see, this is where a smart man would have backed down. Gently diffused his wife's raging and ended the whole conversation. <laughs> not me. No, no, not me. I already said that I was sorry about Friday night. What you want me to do? Huh? You want a signed apology? You want it on a letterhead? I came home, didn't I? You know, you were the one who didn't want to come to this office party with me. What did you expect me to do? You expected me not to turn up to my own office party just because you didn't intend to go? Don't put that on me, James. If I had felt welcomed at your office party like you really wanted me there, then maybe, just maybe I would have come. You ever thought about that? Hmm? If you didn't insist on flirting with all the women at your office. You know what? This is a waste of my time. We've already been over this. If you had come to the party with me, I would not have had to go out with the boys after. So don't go blaming me for going out all night. I'm a big man. I shouldn't be answering to you like this after all these years of marriage. 20 years, James. We've been married for 20 years and this is our 20th anniversary. That's what tonight is all about. 17, 18, 20, who's counting? This feels more like a life sentence to me the way you're carrying on right now. A life sentence? A life sentence, eh, James? <laughs> I guess that's why you can never seem to come home until in the dead of night. At the office doing God knows what. Well, you see, whatever it is you're doing this out there. This is ridiculous. Don't you have anything else to do other than arrest me at work about foolishness? 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 You're calling our marriage foolishness, James? Is that what you're doing? John, I have to go. James, don't hang up on me, no? Joel, I have to call you back. James Mongrove, don't you Joel, dare call me I have me people out. in the office, I'll call you back. J and so started the rapid downward decline of my day. Another fight with Joel? 
followed by even more trouble. Hello? Hi, Jay. Sandra, I'm working, but... Hold on, L let me get to my office. I really don't have time to talk right now, you know, but... I'm glad you called anyway. You kind of broke the stress. I realize you leave work early. Yeah, I wasn't feeling too good. Guys at the office have been driving me crazy all day telling me I need to close the factory early and go home because it's a special day for me. And Joan is harassing the daylight out of me about this stupid anniversary party she and her friends have planned for tonight. Anniversary? It's your anniversary? You never said anything to me. Not that important. Anniversaries are for Young, newly married people who don't know what's ahead of them. Not people are life sentence like me. Anyway, you planning to stop by before you go home? Seriously, Sandra. Didn't I just tell you that today's my anniversary? I have to head home. It's my anniversary today. Yeah, but you don't have to stay long. I have something for you. I didn't want to bring it to your office. You know, wagging tongues. You know how that is. Especially after they saw us leave together to the party on Friday night. You keep harping on Friday night like it was any different from any other night. You really could not blow this thing out of proportion and see things that are not there. As far as I know, whatever happened at the office party was just a mistake. I was tired and I had too much to drink. So whatever happened, if anything happened, was just a mistake. What do you mean by if anything happened. Let's not blow this whole thing out of proportion, Sancha. I don't know how I ended up inside your apartment in the first place. All I know is that we were at the party, we had a few drinks together, and then you asked me to drive home behind you to ensure that you got home safely. It was your idea for me to come up and have a cup of coffee before driving home. Really, James? So that's your excuse? A cup of coffee? You are telling me that you really just came up to my apartment for just a cup of coffee? <laughs> Seriously, Jim? I had to tell Joan I was out entertaining a client after the party. I don't even know if she bought it, but thank God she decided to leave it alone. Well, that's some attitude for a man who ended up in my apartment all night singing Berry's Hammond Lovers Rock in my ears. <laughs> you can't even sing. Honestly, the only thing I remember at this party is how cold on your couch. When I woke up, I had on all my clothes and everything was still in place. I'm pretty sure nothing happened. And so I guess that means you don't remember me having to pour coffee down your throat so that you could go home to your wife. Sandra, I was drunk. So once again, thanks for sobering me up. But that's the whole story, and we both know it. And you know something? That might be the case this time. But you and I have been doing this dance back and forth for way too long now, James. I know you're feeling me, you know. Remember when I just started working for you? How you used to stare at me all the time in the cafeteria? Well, the truth is, Sandra, you are an attractive woman. I'd have to be a dead man not to look at you. That doesn't change anything. This is just not my style. Really, James? Cheating is not in my DNA. And how exactly do you define cheating? Huh? You've been cheating a long time the way you've been lusting after me all these years. Or, let me guess, you're one of those men who don't believe this is cheating, right? <laughs> anyway, the way your marriage is going, I don't think it would matter either way. Sandra, you're a great girl or not. But despite the way it looks, I love my wife. We may not have the perfect marriage, but that does not mean anything. Joan takes good care of me, and I still love her. We made a vow many years now, and I still love my wife. Well, you sure could have fooled me. 
I never see you two together anywhere except church. And you're at your office all night till all hours every single day. So I can't imagine what kind of marriage this could possibly be. Plus, me and your wife got to the same gym, you know that, right? And so? Uh, not, not all, I'm just saying. You still with me? What was I thinking? My head told me to just run this troublemaker off the phone, but my lips just kept on moving. Just saying what exactly? Is there something about my wife that you need to tell me? No, nothing at all. <laughs> nothing at all. Listen, Sandra. Don't you worry about me and Joe. We are just fine. Sundays is my family day. We go to church together every single Sunday. But you don't sit together. So what if we don't sit together? She likes to sit right up front under the pastor's nose. And I prefer to sit around the back where I can slip out when the sermon gets too boring. <laughs> Listen, James. Enough of this. You and I work in the same office. We go to the same church. We even have some of the same friends. We both know that what you're saying is just nonsense. Your marriage ended a long time ago. You better learn to accept that and move on with your life. here by now? Let me guess. He's trying to squeeze more work out of the day. Well, <laughs> you know James. Excuse me, I think I see somebody where I said he should be here by now. I'm sure he probably stopped off somewhere or something. <laughs> Any minute, no. He should be walking through that door. I'm sure. Have a good day ladies. Casey, call your father and find out what time he's getting home from the office. As Mom and Dad will be here any minute. Lord, if it's only one time I wish that man would come home early, it would be today. Mom and Dad can't find out what's really going on here. Mom would just die if she found out her dream son-in-law wasn't everything she thought he was. right now. The phones keep ringing without an answer and he's not picking up his cell. Who knows? He's probably on his way home. Or probably elsewhere. I mean, it's not like he ever comes home during daylight anyways. <laughs> yeah, it's like living in the twilight series up in here. Any day now, we could find out that our dad's a vampire. <laughs> vampire. <laughs> You're so crazy. <laughs> on a serious note though, Casey. Don't you realize that something is just not right with this family? Like what? Dad is never home. Mom is hanging out at the country club all day, every day, practically living in the gym, hanging out on the beach, and she started wearing all kinds of makeup she never used to wear before. And when Dad finally comes home, they don't really talk. He just sits before the TV, eats his dinner, and then before you know it, he's fast asleep. I hear you on that one. He doesn't even talk to us if you really think about it, you know. <laughs> it's almost like four strangers living in this house together like roommates. I guess, but it's no big deal. I mean, we are all very busy people. I know that. But tonight is a big deal. And only God knows where that is. I really thought he would have been home already. He'll make it in the nick of time like always, all right? Casey, you ever stop to wonder if Dad's maybe up to something? 
What exactly do you mean by up to something? What part of up to something don't you understand? You know what I'm talking about. He's never home. And sometimes when I call the office, he's not there either. I was just wondering if maybe... If maybe what? Are you crazy? Daddy may not be the best husband in the world, but he would never cheat on mom, and you know that. He's not that kind of man, Tony. <laughs> Nowadays, I don't take anything for granted. For all we know, they could both be playing around on the side. Oh, grow up. This is the real world. And stuff like that happens all the time. People just won't admit it. That's all. Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to continue in my ignorance, please. Thank you very much. You know what? Just forget it. You can bury your head in the sand all you want, but at some point, you're going to have to realize that this is not some soap opera we're living in. This is the real world, and our family is a mess. Try his cell phone again. He must have left the office by now. I need him to pick up something on his way home. I don't know what I want this time, man. Still no answer, Mom. You know what Daddy is. If he knows that we're calling him to do something, then he's not going to answer the phone. Keep trying. He must answer the phone at some point. That's if he can hear the phone from wherever he is. Why don't you just lay off that, huh? Honestly, I don't think he's cheating, you know. But what else am I left to think the way things are around here? They've been married a long time, Tony. What do you expect at this point? Hugs and kisses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Get real. This is marriage at its best after 20 years, okay? Any luck reaching your father? No, Mom. I'll go to the store and get what you want in a few minutes, okay? And don't worry. You know daddy is, he's probably at the back of the factory trying to get that last possible workout of the work day. Just give us a few minutes and Tony and I will go to the store for you. Tony and I? I never volunteered for that mission. Oh well, tough luck. You come in anyway. Well, for the love of God, choose an outfit, no? The party's tonight, not next week. It's about time you returned the call. Hey, Joan, it's me, Phil. Philip, are you crazy? I told you never to call me at home. My kids are here. Hey, cool down, Joan. Cool down. All right, Philip, this is not a good time, no, you know. It's really not a good time. Look, I didn't see when he left the club this morning, and I just missed you, that's all. As I told you yesterday, today is my anniversary, and so I have a lot of preparation to do. Furthermore, James is at the office all day. And so I've been left with everything to do by myself. <laughs> Why, that husband of yours is some piece of work, yeah? If I had a woman like you at home, I'd be rushing home every evening just to look into your face. And then what would you do after you get tired of looking into my face all day? Well, you would just have to give me the chance to find out now, wouldn't you? Judging from that picnic lunch you brought to the gym last week, I guess one of the other things I'll be doing a lot of is Eating. So you think I'm a good cook, eh? That's just one of the things I think about you, Joan. Really? So what else do you think about me? Lots of things. And I think about you a lot. How beautiful you are. How charming you are. How you make me laugh. And that blue and white bodysuit you wore to the <laughs> gym last Wednesday. Mm. I think about that a lot. <laughs> you really know? Uh, hold on, I'm getting another call. Yeah, I'm back. Don't tell me you don't think about me too, Joan. I can't just possibly vanish from your thoughts after you leave the gym. Well... Okay, so I know what you're thinking. But believe me, it's not what it looks like. It's just some harmless conversation with a friend. Somebody who actually wants to talk to me. Come on, Joan. Be honest for once. 
Tell me you don't think about me at least a little bit. I must admit, I do think about you every now and again. But not in the same way you think about me. Well, do I have to beg? Come on, what do you think? Come on, spill it. My ego could certainly use a boost. <laughs> Your ego needs deflating and not inflating, Mr. Man. Furthermore, my thoughts are private, and I'd like to keep them that way. Thank you very much. Okay, I won't pry, but I know you stare at me when I'm not looking. Yeah, I've seen you looking at me in the mirrors at the gym, and I know you're thinking, mm, that's one fine brother. <laughs> <laughs> Alright now, Philip, really, why did you call me? I just thought that maybe you could slip away for a quick cup of coffee or a quick drink before he gets home. Just want to spend some quality time with you. Get to know you better. Well, Philip, that's a wonderful thought, you know. But as I told you before, I'm not interested in pursuing a relationship with you. I love your company, and you're a great workout partner, and I must admit I do love the attention. But I also love my husband and my family, and they're what's most important to me. Relationships are a two-way street, Joan. How does your husband really feel about it? What exactly do you mean by that comment now? Stop behaving like you don't understand. You love your husband and his family and they're most important to you, but... Does James feel the same way? I mean, it seems to me that his business is more important to him. His business is important. It's what's provided a good life for the children and me. Is that what you really think, Joan? Or are you just repeating what you've been told? Oh no, he did not. He did not just have the gall to tell me that I don't have a mind of my own. <laughs> Men, they're all the same. They are all the same. How did we end up having this conversation, eh? My marriage is not something I want to discuss with you. Come on now, Joan. When was the last time James took you out for a romantic evening of dinner and dancing? When was the last time he brought you flowers? Or tell me something. Does he even notice how fine you've been looking since you've been working out at the gym with me? <laughs> well, Joan, has he? Alright, Phil, that's enough. I've said all I have to say on the matter, alright? What goes on in my home is between my husband and myself. And furthermore... Come on, I... Joan. We're both mature adults here. Let's not play games. You can't tell me that you're not just another lonely housewife stuck in a dying marriage heading to nowhere. All right, Philip, that's enough. I won't stand here and listen to you bash neither my husband nor my failing marriage. That's not the kind of friend I need right now. And you see, if you want to be a friend, you're going to have to do a lot better than tell me how much of a failure my life is. Sorry, Joan. It's just that I care so much about you and I can't stand to see you be taken for granted like this. Just come have the coffee with me. As a friend. I promise. I'll drop the whole subject. Let's come have coffee with me. No, Philip, that's not a good idea. It's not a good idea. I did say just as a friend, Joan. And it seems to me you could really use a friend right now. Just come have coffee with me. I'm still at the club. All right. But just a quick cup. I'm very, very busy, all right? And Philip? Just a cup of coffee. All my life I've been lonely and blue. I've been dreaming of a woman like you. And now you're here. I'm so glad you're in my life. Casey, Tony, I'm going on the road for a minute. You don't have to bother going to the store for me. I'll head there since I'm going on the road anyway. If love is what you need, I'll never make you sad nor blue. If love is what you need, I've got it right here for you. If love is what you need, I'll never make you sad. Where is she up to this time? Who knows? She's always going somewhere anyway. Well, it can't be the gym. She just got back from there. She just seems like she's always rushing off somewhere. Maybe she had some last minute things to do with for tonight. 
Who knows? And why are you so concerned anyway? You know, something just doesn't add up here. First she was frantically trying to get everything ready for tonight. Then she gets a phone call and bam, she's just off somewhere. Plus grandma and grandpa should be here any minute now. What is wrong with that picture? Just let it go, Tony. That's big people business. But have you taken a serious look at our mother lately? She spends all her time at the gym, dieting, shopping for clothes that she really shouldn't be and wearing. What's that supposed to mean? I think mom looks fine for Yeah, her. she does. But she's overdoing it now. She's wearing the same clothes that we wear. Carrying on like she's young. For the love of God, she even had a facelift. So what's wrong with that? Where's the law that says you have to be all popped down just because you're getting older? Stop playing stupid, Casey. You know what I mean. Listen, I told you already, that's big people business, all right? Now just help me find someone to wear now, please. Hello. James, you still at the office? Yes, Sandra, I'm still at my office, getting ready to leave now. What do you want? What's your problem? Why are you talking to me like that? I'm sorry. I guess I'm just a bit worn out. I didn't mean to sound so hostile. So you gonna stop by? Where are you heading now? Going home. It's my anniversary. Where else could I be going? You sure you don't want to just stop by for a quick drink? Sandra, what part of I am heading home exactly don't you understand? I know you don't really want to go home, you know, James. If you wanted to go home, you would have left the office a long time ago. James, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Fresh banana bread, you know. It's in the oven baking right now. Come on. The last time I brought one to the office, you said it was the best banana bread you had ever had. James, fresh banana bread. And I have passion fruit juice as well. Come on. It's the best off on the table today. James, I'm still waiting. Okay, Sanjay. I'll stop by for a few minutes on my way home. If it will get you off my back, I'll see you in a few. I'm gonna make you love me. Oh, yes I will. Yes I will. Don't hold your breath. I am going home. Don't want any more headache right now. God knows I could use some peaceful company tonight. She would just walk down those steps right now. Just to have but for all I know, he's at that same place he was at on Friday night. You know. <sighs> I don't even know what to think anymore. So don't take his love for granted. So I've never seen him so mad before. But who cares? Hmm? He drove me to do what I did. Love is what you need. I'll never make you sad nor blue. If love is what you need, I've got it right here for you. If love is what you need, I'll never make you sad nor blue. I'm gonna take you in my arms. Gonna give you all. And so when a family is broken down,
Dawn. There's an absence of Rick Dawn. There's an absence of there's an absence of reliance and dependence on God. Because God is a God of unity. We're a church brick because of this unity. There's an absence of God. Because where God has preeminence, the unity is established. See? You made it. That wasn't so hard, was it? Yeah, but they're really not going to stay long enough. I think we should just leave. Come on, where are you going? You just got here. Yeah, I know. But I have a lot of things to do. I'm, this was a mistake, so I'm just gonna leave because of this. Joan, Joan. Remember, <laughs> it's coffee. Brother James, your wife is adorable, but she's in a world to herself. What time is your party? Five o'clock, but I still have a lot of stuff to do, and then mom and dad are coming in from out of town, and James should C be on. Come on, Joan. We drove all the way down here to have coffee with me. So let's have the drink. Let me promise you something. You can go in just a few minutes, but just give me enough time to soak up your beauty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're something else. All right, I guess one couple won't hurt. God gave you a family. Your daughters need you, and I believe it's my responsibility to let you know that God requires so much more. And I did drive all the way down here, so what? <laughs> Well, <laughs> with you, my dear, there will be impossibilities. <laughs> so, will you give me the opportunity to explore? Ah. <laughs> so, tell me about you. <laughs> really, Philip? What else is there to know about me? Isn't that Joan with Philip, that gym instructor guy? Hmm. Wonder what that's all about. I don't know, but I sure intend to find out. Felice, well, leave people's business alone. People's business? That's not people's business. That's my best friend over there. I have every right to watch her back. Uh -uh. I know that guy. He's not up to anything good. Well, from what I can see, they're just having coffee. Like I said, I know that guy. Hey, John. Hi, Felicia. What What's are up? you doing here? I thought you'd be at home getting ready for the party. Yeah, just having a cup of coffee. So leave. What are you doing here anyway? Ah, uh, just picking up dinners for my house guests. Okay. I have family in town, so I decided to order a few platters mm. just to feed the masses. Can't bother with all that cooking. Yeah. Too much work for little reward. I know what you mean. Uh -huh. You know, Philip. Can you excuse me a minute? Okay. John. What are you doing, Joan? Listen, what? I don't want to hear it. I know you're having problems at home, but this is not the way to solve it. I know that guy, Joan, and he's not up to anything good. Always preying on unhappy married women. If you have a problem, come to me. You need someone to talk to? Come to me. Me. That's what friends are for. That and getting your butt out of bad situations. Lord knows, Joan, if I'd had someone doing this for me two years ago, I still have my husband. This isn't what you want. Trust me, Joan, you don't want to do this. So you know what? 
go and get your bags, say goodbye, and let's get out of here. You have an anniversary party to go to tonight. Let's go, Joe. No. completed the renovations. You are still trying to figure out what color to paint the dining room in. I see you've got the two masks. That sitting area is fabulous. Yeah, the workmen did a good job with everything. But James negotiated the price down to almost nothing. He can't beat James when it comes to getting a good price. He knows to get the best deal for his money. And why shouldn't he? He works hard for his money. Why should he give it up without a fight? Money's not our problem, Dad. I could wallpaper this entire house with it if James would let me. <laughs> no, Dad, I'd like to see. <laughs> now you think I'm, I'm joking? I wish money was our problem. At least I know how to fix it. Where's James anyways? Shouldn't he be at home by now? It's almost party time. Well, he's not answering his phone and he's not at the office either, so only God knows where he could be. He'll probably want to do at any minute now. Or not. You can never tell with him nowadays, you know. And see, it looks like it's going to rain. I hope it stops before the party. How long has this thing going on, Joan? What? There's nothing going on between me and James. We're just fine. Just that I get annoyed with his long hours, that's all. Joan. You can't give us basket to carry water. So what exactly is going on between you and James? Dad, everything is just fine. Joan, we're your parents. And we know you. I don't think we've ever seen you so unhappy. Look around at all you have. Mm. This fabulous house. Olympic size swimming pool. Three car garage. This living room, the size of our entire apartment. This is all the luxury that we have dreamed of. It is everything we've ever dreamed of, Dad. But we've paid a high price for it. What do you mean? You and James work good money. You guys can afford this. We can. But I mean, we've paid a high price with our marriage. Is that son in love mind cheating on you? No, Mom. Mm -mm, nothing like that. At, at least I don't think so. I really can't swear for anybody, you know. I really can't. And besides, when he comes home, he's just too tired. And we don't really talk to each other anymore. We don't even have any time together anymore. We don't talk unless it has to do with the bills, the children, or the house. I guess we've just grown apart. In fact, statistics show that most marriages turn into this. It's just natural, I guess. Don't talk foolishness, child. It's natural only if you accept it as natural. Look at your mom and I. And we have been married for five and seven years. I'm not saying that we don't have our problems. But to work hard to make our marriage work. Well, Dad, you are one of the lucky ones. James stopped working at our marriage a long time ago. And you, are you still working at it? Or are you laying down your arms too? When was the last time you guys went on a date? Took a vacation. Mommy talking nonsense. James is at the office from Monday to Saturday. And when he gets home, he's just too tired. He barely manages to eat dinner and fall asleep. And then on Sundays now, we have church. And between service, visitation, Sunday school, and then night service, it's just time to start the week all over again. So we really don't have no time for no date or anything like that. So what's your plan to do, Joan? Sit down and watch a marriage die a slow and painful death. And when you reach 70 and start regretting, are you going to take some action and get James get to Get James to do what, eh? James. <laughs> Mama Sims! <laughs> hey, Pops, I know. Yes. It's good to see you guys, <laughs> man. Good to see you. <laughs> but you guys talking about my bed, my back. No, James, you know we wouldn't do that. I was just here telling Joan that we think it's time you guys take a vacation. Oh. You work hard and I think that it's time it slow down somewhat and just go and have some fun time with your wife. Mama Sims, money doesn't grow on trees in, and factories don't exactly run themselves. If I follow you and the guys at work, I probably wouldn't meet my deadline today. I'd be counting my losses right now. I understand that, son. But it's your anniversary. Not just any old anniversary, it's your 20th. 
You run yourself ragged like this. Uh, you make all the money in the world, but you won't have any help to enjoy it with. Uh. Understand where you're coming from, you know, Mama Sims. Believe me, but it takes cash to care. And every penny comes when you're caring as much as I am. I'm into the business of making money, not losing it. Excuse Jonah, may I please? Have you tried calling James? What? No. Why should I try calling him? John, have you heard from him? No. Alright? And I'm not going to call him. He's the one who stormed me. Why should I always be the one to extend the olive branch? Come on, John. Huh? You're as much to blame as he is. You provoked this argument. And what you said to him didn't help the situation either. I'm not calling. As usual, it's all about the money. Sure, we have more than enough, but it is still always about the money. What exactly are you going to lose by closing up one day? Just one day to come home to your wife to celebrate your 20th anniversary. Hmm? We have so much money, it's not like you can't stand to lose some. You must be crazy, woman. You know how much money I donated to Christmas charities? Huh? I gave thousands of dollars to the church's homeless feeding program, the Salvation Army, and not to mention your pet project to spay and neuter stray animals. I gave 10 gallons of cordial to the Alpha Boys for their project. I even gave blood to the Red Cross. And on top of that, your Christmas slash anniversary gift, that brand new Audi A5 that you ordered from ATL, that cost me a pretty penny. So in order for me to continue giving, I have to concentrate on getting. After 20 years, I think I deserve a brand new Audi. And Christmas is all about giving. As a matter of fact, it's about giving sacrificially. When God sent Jesus into the world, it's a sacrifice he made to die for corrupt people. Right? So it's all about giving sacrificially. And I have been giving sacrificially for the last 20 years. But do you appreciate it? No! All I get is your constant nagging. Oh, so I'm a nagging yes. wife now. Ain't James Monroe? Yes. Is that what you think I've been saying all these years? I never told you I needed all of this. What? I never told you I needed a new car. I never told you I needed an Olympic sized swimming pool or any of these things that you, you like to shower down on your family. So, so what have I been slaving for all these years if you don't need any of this, eh? You I have been slaving because you don't listen to me, James Mangrove. I was happier when we lived in a three-bedroom house. And we used to spend more time together. Do you remember those times, James? Do you even remember? Of course I remember. But is that all you expected of me? To keep my family in a mediocre life? I wanted the best for you. And I gave everything but my blood so you could have it. And now all of a sudden, it's not good enough. I never said that. And as usual, you're putting words in my mouth. I'm just saying that the sacrifice wasn't worth it, James. Sure, we have all of this luxury. But at what price? Hmm? Was it really worth it? I don't see how we have suffered for it. You're blind as well as stupid. Our marriage is a joke. Every single night you're out there until you're too tired to talk to me. Every single night I'm here alone, Jim. Yes, and every single month I pay the bills and then some with the money I make from being out there all night slaving myself to death. Why? Why must it always be about the money? Hmm? When was the last time we did anything fun together? When was the last time we spent some time together? I tried inviting you to my <laughs> office party last week. But no, you don't want to come. You don't want to hang around my staff. My own wife and none of my staff know what you look like. You don't even have any interest in what I do. So that's why you didn't come home until daylight? Joel, I have explained that over and over and over again. What do you want me to do? You want me to write it in blood on the walls? That's it, tells me. it does not make any sense, James. It doesn't make any sense and you know it. Who is she, James? What? Who is she? What the like my woman? Who is who? After 20 years, I have the right to know. So call the <laughs> what, what, what is she? What you talking about, woman? Who is who? You call me 10 times a day. Day and night you call me at the office, you get me. When do you think I would find time to, to have another woman and maintain this lifestyle for you? For me? For me, James? You maintain this lifestyle for me? Of course, for you and for the kids. And what do I get?
get in return, huh? What do you do for me? What do you do all day? Did you even notice I've been going to the gym? Hmm? Did you even notice that I changed my hair? <laughs> I bet you didn't, you know. But you know what? Someone else noticed. What you said to me? You heard me, James. Someone else noticed. So you cheating on me now? That is it. I am out there busting my chops to give you a life of luxury. Out there spending it with your boyfriend. I don't have a boyfriend, James. Although God knows sometimes I wish I did. At least he'd give me some attention. Attention? You never seem too concerned about attention when the money started rolling in. Now that you're bored with it, all of a sudden it's not enough. You know what? Have a happy anniversary. I'm leaving this place. I don't even know why I came home in the first place. Where are you going? Hmm? You have to pick up your tux. Where is your tux? You can't leave where I get ready for the party. Party? Party? You go and enjoy your party. You and your boyfriend have a happy anniversary. I'm going somewhere where I've got to hear your knocking voice. Behold the again. These fights are just too much. They're every day now. What I can't believe is that they get in front of grandma and grandpa. Well, why not? They don't seem to care when we're here, so why should their presence make any difference? This is so messed up. I don't even feel like going out again. Stop being so dramatic, Tony. This kind of thing's happened to family all over the world. Why should ours be any different? <laughs> you know, it's funny how at celebrations, it makes us feel like we need to be so loving and wonderful to everyone, but yet still, for the rest of the year, we treat each other like strangers. It doesn't make any sense. That's just foolishness. So what are you trying to say? That we must just be cool with the situation? Again, stop with your dramatics, Tony. We might as well face the facts. Our parents probably are going to get a divorce. And what's so difficult about that? Most of our friends' parents are divorced, and they seem all right. We'll survive. So that's your attitude. We'll survive. Well, what do you expect us to do? At least our family's keeping it real. I, I don't know. But there must be something we can do. We can't just sit back and watch this whole family fall apart. Look, I don't know about you, but I'm not about to put my mouth into big people's business. As far as we know, there's no magic dust that we can sprinkle on them to get them back together. You have to just face the fact. Our family is a mess. But as long as it doesn't affect me and how I live, then I'm cool. We're supposed to be a Christian family, Casey. Somewhere along the way, it seems that all has been completely forgotten. This isn't how a Christian family behaves. We're sounding just at like the people across the street who don't even believe that there's a God. <laughs> oh my goodness. Why are you all up in the business of the people across the street? Can you imagine what they think of us when we are constantly inviting them to church, but all they can hear coming from our house is this cussing and quarreling nonstop? <sighs> all families fight. So if they're going to use that to judge our Christianity, then that's just foolishness. What is wrong with you? Do you even hear yourself speaking? Don't even care what happens to this family? It's not that I don't care, but I am just more realistic than you. Now look, I'm not about to set myself up for a fall, all right? Now, 
I don't know what you think we can do, but why don't you do what you're always telling me to do? Go ahead, knock yourself out. P-U-S-H, push. Pray until something happens. Be my guest. If you think that will help, pray. Exactly what's going to happen if you're driving that state. Man, it's your anniversary. Didn't you tell me that you have a party at the Maxim tonight? Shouldn't you be at home getting ready or at least there now? any man would be at times. And your wife, just as bad for not telling you how she really feels. and everything that you want for them. James, I see you more often than your own family. Ah, as a matter of fact, why are you telling me that you love your wife, eh? Tell her she's the one that needs to hear, not me. Yeah. 
Heavenly Father, it is me again. I'm weary and broken, Lord, this feels like the end. These things you've allowed me to go through have led me here to you. You see, my spirit is willing, yet my flesh is still weak. And it's been a while since I last heard you speak. I want to throw in the towel and just walk away. But there's some things, Lord, that I need to say. I must thank you, Lord, for keeping me, for my health, my strength, and my family, and all the blessings you've afforded me. Can I join you? Shetty? Yes, ma'am. Could you go to some work in the backyard, please? All right, ma'am. John, I know you love your husband. But I also know that this whole mess cannot be all James's fault. It takes two to tango, honey. Have you tried talking with James? Huh? Or have you been just talking to him? Have you tried to get him to understand what you're really feeling? Or have you just been accepting everything as they come? John, James is a good man. He just got caught up in the world and lost track of what's most important. Sometimes we have to get creative and find ways to spice up our marriage, make our husbands remember what made us get married in the first place. John, you have tried the silent approach and it hasn't worked. You tried the make him jealous approach and it hasn't worked. Finding another man is not the answer, girl. They all have their faults. And we women are no walk in the park either with our mood swings and emotional roller coaster we take our families through. Joan, James is a good man and successful too. If you don't find a way to fix this mess, some other woman is going to find a way to fix it for you and for good too. Listen, man. Your family needs you. I understand it. I would trade places with you right now if I had somebody to go home to. I would shut this dump down tomorrow. I had someone to go home to in the evenings. James, you're a lucky man. Real lucky man. Wife look good. Keep her wrong, you know. She have her thoughts. But you are not so perfect neither. You need to go home before some other man come and take your place. Boss, you better listen to him, you know. So I can know him a taxi. Your father and I haven't had it easy these past 47 years. But I've learned to understand him. And he has learned to put up with me. All those young guys out there filling up your head with compliments and words of comfort can't offer what you have with James and your own family. What you have is solid, Joan. Your problems are not impossible to solve. He doesn't beat it, does he? And I refuse to believe that James is cheating on you. He's just not that type. He provides well for you and the kids. So there must be something else wrong. Something that's not beyond fixing. You have tried doing this all on your own, honey. Now it's time to try something new. Let God step in, Joan. Pray for your marriage. This isn't too hard for God. And for God's sake, stop the quarreling. 
Less quarreling and more talking. Try talking instead. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me. For my health, my strength, and my family. Know the blessings you've afforded me. It's a long way you brought me. So brother, look like I'm looking for you, man. Yeah. In there, man. You better come get him in it. Because I don't think you should be driving in this state. Alright. Cool. Paul say my father if you come bring your home. You better go home, man. I'm gonna get ready. Clean up yourself. I'm gonna celebrate with your wife. I'm sure say no 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 I done this did this marriage in it. Cause if you didn't want, he'd have gone a long time. Put away your pride for a while, my boss. I'm going to talk to your wife and work it out, man. You are the man, James. You are the man. You need to make it right. Boss. You need to fix this. Oh, hold on. Now you are the church, man. Eh? Always telling me about how me much come to church and how you will pray for me. Eh? Always telling me that there is not too big for God. Well, take my advice, yeah, boss. Take your half drunk self, half on my bar stool, and go fix things with your wife. Want me to wait for you, my brother? Nah, I'll be alright. James, hope you don't plan to embarrass Joan, you know, by not turning up to the party. It's embarrassing enough that she has to be making excuses for you. Can't make any promises, Paul. Can't promise you that. James! James! No bother with the foolishness in a man. You see, if I don't see at Max and within an hour's time coming down those steps, and I come in here to get you myself. You understand that? James, you're a heavy drinker now. T tell me, what part of that can glorify God? Your pain and your hurt, and your stress and what you're going through, the answer cannot be liquor. The answer must be Jesus.
Bible said, for what will it profit you if you gain the entire world? Losing your family, meaning that you are losing out on a God-given responsibility. Cheated on me? He cheated on me, Joel. After all we've been through, I mean, I know we got married young, but me, Joel. How could you? Mom, don't worry, all right? Dad will be here. And you know he loves you. Yeah. He will be here, all right? Yes, he will. He's gonna be here. Yeah, he will. God, how could you? Been going to church for a long time. Take it for all of this. Could you take it away just like that? Sitting in the pew, just like the that. chosen few. God, you say you love me! You mocked and you jeered what the preacher said. Yeah, you know. Ignoring the importance yeah, of God's know. holy word. But the preacher kept preaching. <laughs> the choir started singing. There's room at the cross for you. <laughs> Something inside you begins to burn. You hear a soft voice calling your name. It's time you meant much to me, God, and I am here. Yeah. I can't fix it by myself. It alone, now you're sitting confused. I just don't, don't know it. what to do. Still, there's room at the cross for you, and your soul wants to cry. Forgive me, Lord. I love my daughter.
Exactly, are you doing here? Well, it is a party, and we are friends, so I'm just here to celebrate with a happy couple. Sandra, nobody invited you, and nobody wants you here. You got that? You are just hell bent on destroying my marriage, and it is not going to happen. So just leave. You're going to be sorry, you hear? You're going to be very sorry. What? Are you threatening me? Are you serious? On Monday morning, when you report to work, you pack your stuff and you head to Spanish Town for 10 a.m. You are transferred. You see, you're a good worker, Sandra. And this company would hate to lose you. So that's my final offer. Either you take it or you leave. The exact moment when the sun sets and the moon rises. The moment when God's light fades and his darker side presents itself. Meet me at 11.59 p.m. and 59 seconds down. I want to say goodbye to today with you. I want to embrace the importance of one second and ring in tomorrow with smile. Meet me at the precise moment the cloud becomes too full and the first raindrop escapes the cloud's grip. I want to feel the freshness of rain as it washes away the dirt of our dried tears. Meet me when the seed cracks and a leaf first grows. Sorry, Drew, for everything, for not listening to you, for not being there for you, for not listening to you so much. I love you, Drew. Always have and always will. Oh, the kids will be leaving out in another couple of years and eh? we're all we've got. I can't let you go now, Joe. I don't want to lose you now. Anymore. For the first time in a long time, I prayed for us. Today, I pray for us. And not just for you or for me. I'm sorry if I hurt you. I'm sorry if I wasn't supportive of your dreams and for your successes. I have 20 years behind this Jimmy. 20 wonderful years. I don't want to feel it all over. Let's be off the same tree and bring forth the purest fruits. I want us to be solid at our roots and foundation. Meet me at the moment sleep arrives, when we go from falling to falling. The moment when we are no longer thinking of each other, 
Instead, we are dreaming of each other. Meet me. Meet me. Meet me. Meet me. Meet me. At the distinct time my lips meet you. The flawless moment when your fingers brush my arm. The exact period of when we became more than friends. Meet me. Meet me. At the moment when for now becomes forever. L-O-V-E Love oh, yeah. It's all about love Number one Oh, no. 